right, good morning, everyone. Again, uh, we have more people joining us. That's great. Uh, 10.03. The plan is to work on the Z tables and the Z scores, take more examples. Hopefully we'll better understand this concept. I know it's a tricky, so the more you practice, the better for you. We'll take a look into the uh, what we have covered so far. We did start with the Z scores and why do we need them? Because when we have a Z, when we use the Z score, you could determine the position of a single score under the normal curve. Uh, so the idea for using the Z scores is to find out what's the position of that score. I give an example, you achieved 70, 75 on a, on a quiz out of 100. And we need to know where are you, where is your position comparing to the rest of the class? Are you on the top 10? Above average, below the average, and this is where we need to use the curve. And you normal curve is a way to determine the position of that particular score. What is the Z score? It's measured in standard deviation relate, relative to the mean on of the curve. The Z score can be used to determine an area under the curve known as probability. The equation that we use to find the z-score would be the x, basically the value, minus the average divided by sigma or the standard deviation. Again, sigma and standard deviation is the same meaning. Here's the, to the normal curve and we say the total, the total area under the curve is one or 100%. So if I ask Ethan, I said, Ethan, what would be the area from here on the left side? What percentage is that? Um, I'm not sure, one, one percent? Well, if the whole thing is 100%. Oh, 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, yes. The whole, the whole thing is 100% or, or one, so the area here is 0.5 or what we call 50%. What does the 50% mean, uh, Micah? What does that 50% mean? What percentage that when I see? Uh, it means that 50% of the data is found under that, that part of the curve. Yes, thank you, awesome. So what does the 50% means? That 50% of the data located on this side. And okay, how about if we said, uh, Alicia, what would be the percentage on the right side here? It would also be 50%. That would be 50%. So if I asked uh, Eric, if I ask you, Eric, we have a line here. We're going to create a line here. Okay. What do you expect? Estimate the percentage of data. And I'm gonna change this to green. I would like to see an estimate of the percentage wise for the data located under the curve. Uh, that would be close to 75%. Very, very good answer. Very good answer. So that's a smart answer. So here we have a 50%. So we know that this is 50% from here to here. That's the mean, that's a goal. And we added another, whatever, 10, 25%. So that would be, let's say 75%. Yep, that is correct. And how about if I said, uh, Cole, how about if I said this here, I'm gonna change it to a darker color. If I said, what do you expect the percentage of data here on this section right here? I'd say probably. Say it again. Uh, maybe 20%. Sure, we'll do 20%. So now we're estimating it because we don't have the, 
we don't have uh, full information on the standard deviation and the mean and so on, but just a rough estimate. And that will help you a lot when you calculate the Z-score. You will say, okay, well, I'm looking into this area. That should be around 20%. This should be, if I'm looking into this area, it should be around 75% and, and so on. Maybe here would be what, 90%. So you start from a 0% on the left side and end up with a 100% on the right side. So again, this is excellent. You will give you an idea that where is this located, but with more information, with more information, we could find exactly the location. So if we have the mean and we have the standard deviation, we could say, okay, that line, this point right here, is 1.5 1, 1 away from the mean or 1.5 1, 1 standard deviation away from the mean. But right now we don't have information, but we will take more examples to uh, figure out. And we did talk about uh, the greater mean, uh, which means that's the mean here. We need to, uh, to compare the two standard, the two normal curve with each other. We found that this A is, has a greater mean because it's shifted to the right and B is shifted to the left, that would be a, a lower mean average. And we know that the average is putting the symmetry line here. This is where you make the, this is why we call the symmetrical uh, curve because if you put this, uh, the line of symmetry would be uh, dividing the curve into two halves, that's exactly the same. And we did talk about the peakness of the data and how we could, translate this into less variation. This A has a less variation because it's very close to the mean. The standard deviation is low here. So B has a greater standard deviation because the data is spread is wide. So we have a, a wide spread of that data here. Excellent. Now, we did talk about the Z-score itself and we give this example. I'm gonna jump onto the example to show you how we could find out the Z score. So, and we said the Z score equation would be X of I, which is the value of X minus X bar, which is the mean divided by the standard deviation or what we call the sigma. So for this example, what we have, we have 87%. Uh, As you see, we are able, we need to find out the area under the normal curve to the right of 87%. So again, we're back to the 50% if you guys remember, and you did an excellent job figuring out these areas. So this is a 50%, right? This is a 50% here. So 87% would be somewhere in here. So I did create, the first thing you wanna do is sketch your normal curve. Have a paper and pencil in front of you and do a, uh, a sketch, a quick sketch. Where is the 87%? And again, you don't have to be accurate, but that will give you a, the percentage of the data. And then highlight the, the area that we're looking for, that we're interested in. We highlight it. We said to the right, that means this is the area. However, the Z-score table will give me the area from here to here, all the way to here. So, and that's why this is not what I need, unless this is what I need. If they said the lift of 87%, then that's whatever number is there on the Z-table, that would be the number. But since saying it's on the right of 87%, so the first thing that you wanna do is what? Is draw your uh, normal curve. There is the normal curve, a rough draft, a rough sketch. You say, okay, here's the 50%. This is 0 0.05. Okay, and I'm asking to do, the question is asking to do the right of 87%. 87% somewhere in here, okay. There is 87%. Again, you don't have to be accurate, and, but as 87%, uh, this is one. And we sit to the right, so we highlight this. One. I hope you guys are talk, talk, taking some notes and following me. And I hope you guys, by this time, you draw your, you sketched your, your diagram, your, your uh, normal curve. Okay. So this is what the area that I'm looking for. Again, this is just a replication for, for what I have here. This to show you what information you need to include. So now we're going to, we, we created that. We're looking into this area right here and that would be, so what? It's very, very teeny tiny one. So don't, do not expect that to be less than, uh, more than 20%. 
So first thing we go to the Z table and we did explain it last time. I want you to go to the uh, Z table right now one more time. And especially these of you who has an electronic textbook, there is a table on the textbook because the table should start like this, zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three. But however, in the electronic textbook, this started with a zero, nine, zero, eight, zero, seven. So please make a note that this is not the right way for, our name. but the, ta the values inside the table are correct, but the heading of the table is wrong. So please make a note that your electronic, if you're using electronic uh, textbook, you have to correct that. All right, so we said you go to the positive Z-score table and you find eight on the, on the rows. So this is 8.08 .08, and 0 0.07 is this column. And you go to the intersection and you take that point. So that would be, that means 80% is uh, under the curve. And then back to the, to the, your sketch, we found from here to here to be 80% point, seven, eight, and that percent. And we know the whole thing is 100%. So in order to find this area on the right of eight, seven Z score, we say 100, percent or one minus 80, seven, eight. And that will give you a 19, 22 percent. So what does that mean? 19.22 percent of the data located on the right side of 87 Z score. Another example, let's take a look into this example. Find the area under the standard deviation normal curve between two and three. Okay, so again, what you need to do, you start with the, the standard normal standard deviation that has a mean of, of zero and standard deviation of one, sigma is one. So you create the, you sketch the normal curve and you said, okay, here is zero. If we go one, that would be one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation. And the same thing, if you wanna add more information, say this is negative one standard deviation. This is negative two standard deviation, and this is negative three standard deviation, if needed, but this is not needed. So the area that we're looking for is between two and three, between area two and three. So what you need to do, you go to the Z-score table, and find a positive one. Go to the positive one. Go to the positive one. If you guys have a, uh, uh, an auto-generated name, please change it to your correct name so I could know you who you are. Uh, so we're looking to the Z-score table and we found that the two would be 0.974. So what does that mean? The area from here to here is 97.72. 97.72. And for three Z-score or three would be 99.87. So we know that the area from here to here would be 99.87. All right. So now what we're trying to find, we're trying to find the area in between the 99.87 and the 99.72. And what you need to do, you need to subtract the 99.87 minus nine, seven, seven, two. And that will give you a point zero, two, one, five, or 2.15 person. All right, 
So, any question or comment here? I'm gonna stop right here and see what you guys think. All right, excellent. All right, another example. This is more practical example. And this will help you to, so in the previous examples, we did not, you, we did not calculate the Z-score just to simplify things and, and give you an idea on how to manage the normal curve. Now let's take an actual example where the weights of 10 year old girl are broken, are known to be normal. So these are normal curve. We looked into that, this is normal. There's nothing unnormal data in there. The mean is 70 pounds, and standard deviation of 13 pounds. Obtain the percentage of 10 year old girl with a weight between 60 and 90 pounds. So what I wanna do here, I hopefully wanna use the, the whiteboard for you guys. So I'm gonna change to here. Do you see the whiteboard, guys? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Alicia. Okay. First thing I want to do is create a normal curve. Here. Would it be 70 pounds? That would be the mean. Yes, that would be the 70 pounds. Okay. Now we're going to create a one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation. One, two, and three. On the right and on the left. So what is the standard deviation here? That would be 13, right? 13 is the standard deviation. So if we're going to be one standard deviation away from the mean positive, that would be what? What would be the value here? 83. Yes, 83. Two standard deviations. 96. Three standard deviation. 109. 109, thank you. And how did we figure out this? We added 13 to the 70. That will give you 83. So if we say 70 is the mean, and the data is one standard deviation away from the mean, that would be 83. Okay, same thing, two standard deviation. We say 83 plus 13, 96. All right, let's take the other side. What would be if we are away of the mean by negative one standard deviation? What is that, what the value would be? You say 70 minus 13, right? And what is that number? 57. Okay. 57, yes. Okay. Minus two standard deviation, which we are away by negative two standard deviation. So same thing, 57 minus 13. 
That would be 44, right? And again, 44 minus 13 would be 31. 31. Okay, that's enough. That should be enough. Now, our target is to find the percentage of these girls between 60 and 90. So where is 60? 60 is right here. So I'm gonna create a line all the way up. There is a 60. Okay, this is 70, this is 57. So it's about here. That would be the 60, okay? And now the upper control limit or the other boundary is 90. So 90 is, so here's 83, here's 96. Then 90 would be somewhere in here, right? You guys with me? Are you guys with me? Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. So now we want to highlight that thing. So what do what we did so far? We created the normal curve. We put the mean. We put the standard deviation. One standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation, and the same thing on the left side: negative one, negative two, negative three. And we now we need to highlight this area right here. That is the area that we are interested in. So that area, we have to go to the Z table now to find out what? To find the Z score. We don't have a Z score. These are an actual score. These are actual scores. So what we need to do, we need to go to the Z, to, the, to use the Z equation to find the Z score, the, the standard Y score. So the Z score for the 60 would be the equation is x minus x bar, which is the average divided by the standard deviation. So 60 minus, what is the mean? 70 divided by what is the standard deviation? Is 13. Right? Do the math for me, please. Sixty minus seventy divided by thirteen. You guys see the whiteboard as well? Yep. Okay, what what yeah. what what is the result of sixty minus seventy divided by thirteen? Uh, 0. 0.76 or 0. 0.77 be better. 0. 0.77 negative. It's important to take the note of that of that sign, positive or negative, because if it's if it's negative, that means you have to use the negative table. If it's positive, you use the positive table, the z-score. Okay. Now let's find the z-score for 90. That would be 90. Minus one. Come on, guys. 90 minus what? 70. Yes, 70. The, the value minus the mean divided by what? 13. 13, yes, the standard deviation. And that would be what? 1.54. 1.54, excellent. And that's positive. Next, the next step would be go to the Z-score table, go to the table and find me that the value for negative seven, seven. So you go to the table, the table will look like this. Go to the row, start with the row, find the value which 0 0.07 negative, of course. We are in the negative table. And 
when the rows find the point zero seven and find the intersection value here. Find me what would be this value. Give it to me, please. Again, I want you guys to go to the Z tables and go to the negative one and find the 77, negative 77. Go to the negative table, the first one on page. What page is that, guys? 389? 489 and 490. Okay, go to 489 and find me the value of the negative 77. And you go start with the start with the first column and go down with the rows to negative to the 7.7. .7. And now go to the columns of 0 0.07 and find me the intersection between these two columns. Did you find the value? What that value would be? Is it 0 0.2206? 2206, yes. It is 2206. Okay. Put this on the side. 2206, what does that mean? That means the area from here, from the 60 and below, would be 0 0.2206. 0 0.2206. And now let's go to the positive table and find me the 1.54. 1.54. Point nine three nine three eight two. All right, now, now what we have to do is to mark this down on the chart. So we say from here to here, that would be nine three. Eight, two. So what we're interested in is this area, the highlighted area, and that would be subtracting. You guys see the green color or should I use something else? We see it good. All right. So the next would be 9382 minus 0.2206. Find me what would be that value. Seven, one, seven, six. And that would be equal to 71.76%. So the conclusion for this 71.76% of the girls are between between 60 and 90 between 60 and 90 all right question comment were you guys able to figure it out yeah this is fairly simple all right excellent now if i ask so one of you said okay what would be the percentage of the girls under 60 Pound. What would be the percentage of girls that are under 60 pounds? There is a 60. We did the z-score first. We found the percentage here. And we said this, these are the girls under the 60 percentage. That would be 22.06. So 22.06 under 65. About if we said how many uh, or what would be the percentage of the girls under the 90 pounds, that would be 
9382. All right, good question now. For extra credit, what would be the percentage of the girls who weighed more than 90 pounds? What is the percentage of the girls that weighed more than 90 pounds? Would it be 6.18? you said? 6.18? Or point six one eight? Point six one eight. Okay, I, I, I just wrote it here. I don't know what's the answer. I have to figure it out. Any other answers? The question is, what percentage of the girls weigh more than 90 pounds? I have only Alicia answered. And she's answered to be, did you say 0 0.0618 or 0 0.618? I don't know, I'm kind of rethinking it now. <laughs> right. Take your time, you're gonna get extra credit for that. Any answers, Any, can anyone tell me what the percentage of the girls who weigh more than 90 pounds? Uh, I think it is uh, 0 0.618 as well. Point six one eight. Is that what you said? Point six one eight. Er, well, it's six point one eight percent. So point oh six one eight. Point oh six one eight. All right, let's do the math and see. So who, who's that? Dylan. Dylan. Okay, excellent. So I can, can give you extra credit for that if you got it right. <laughs> no worries, I'll give you extra credit. So what, what we know here from all the calculations that we did, we know that there's 93.82 who weighed under 90 pounds. Now we're interested in more than that. We know the whole area is 100%. So we say 100% minus the 93.82% and that should give you, I'm gonna use my calculator here in just a second to double check on the answer that I've been given. 100 minus 93.82, that would be 6.18% or 0 0.0618. Yes, excellent, excellent. Dylan and Alicia, you guys got extra points for answering this question. Very good. Very good, very good. All right, now let's continue and see how we could uh, move on with the uh, next example. All right, now, okay, we're having some questions here, so you could, uh, you could answer them, but with, with the time that we have, I'm looking into the uh, time that we have, we should maybe, here's, here's the answer, please work by yourself on these examples, and check your answer with these that I provided, and if you have a question, uh, let me know, I could meet with you on one-to-one. -one. Just to save some time, I want to move on with the, uh, with the with the slides here. So here, what I what I provided to you guys here, what I provided to you guys, a link. That link is very nice and very helpful, very handy, especially when you have a a, a quiz that you fin you have to finish it within like a a minute or two question that you have to minute to finish it within one or two minutes so what you do instead of doing all these calculations as we did here you could go to this link and uh and uh, and do the uh work so let me 
uh, open this and uh, walk you through the process of using this uh, website. All right, so So we're going to use the same uh, example that we finished about the 10 year old girls with the weight. We have the mean to be 70. So I'm gonna put the mean to be 70. Standard deviation is 13. So as you see what, what happened here, the, the application, the website created the sigmas. So here's the 70, 83, 96, and 108, 109. 57 on the left, 44 and 31. And this is exactly what we did. And thank you, Alicia, for helping me figure out these. Um, now, what we need to find, the question is to find the uh, percentage of girls between 60 and 90. So I selected between and I said 60 and 90. And now click, calc uh, just click outside somewhere and you will find that the they highlight exactly what we did manually on, on the board. They did it for us here. So this is 60s, this is 90. They highlighted the area and they got, they said the 71.72. And I think we got the same one, 71.76 because we're using, this is maybe more accurate, uh, but because we use the tables, uh, give us a slightly different answer. So 71.72 here based on the website and we got 71.76, so it's point zero 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 four the difference but that's okay not a big difference so that's a fun website that you could use if we said uh, the last uh, question that i give you extra credit for it and i said i need to find out the girls who are above 90 and select outside that would be 0 0.062 and exactly what we have here 0 0.6 0 0.0618, we have a more accurate result. So uh, it's very fun. If we said below, as I said, below the 60, if we go below 60, we put below 60 here and click outside and that will do it 2209. And we have 2206. So it's very close. So it is a fun uh, software. It's a fun uh, website. If you did not understand the concept of the normal curve and you need some help, you try try this one and you would love it. This is a great tool that I, I'm so happy to find it here because I know this subject is challenging and still people not understanding. Even if I spent 10 lectures talking about it, if you don't practice, if you don't focus, you're not gonna get it. But another alternative for you is to use this website, try it and, uh, and let me know if you have questions. It's a great website. Love it. All right. Moving into the next topic, which is now we're going to do, but we're going still to do the uh, Z score, but now we're going to find the percentage. If we said uh, now the opposite. Now, what we did is uh, we have the score and we found we need to find out. We said what percentage of the girls, for example. Now we have to do the opposite. If the percentage is given, we need to find the z-score. We need to find the x. So it's the opposite way. To demonstrate this, let's, uh, let's take a look into this example. Uh, find the 60th percentile of weight of 10 year, uh, 10 year old girls, given the weight is a normal distributed. It's important to know that's normal because that's why we, all our calculation is based on normality, based on the normal, normal data with mean of 70 pounds and standard deviation 13, similar to the example there. But now what we need to do, we need to find the 60th percentile. What is the, if you wanna achieve on the top of the 10%, what grade you should get? Exactly, this is how I explain to my students. If you wanna be the top 10% of the class, what the grade that you should get? And this is what we're going to do. Find the 60th percentile of weight of 10 years old, so 60th percentile. So where is that? That would be, if we say the middle here is the 50, again, you create the normal curve and that would be the 50 here. I'm gonna use a uh, red color here. So now again, this is the 50%, right? At the normal on the mean. 
And now we're trying to find the 60th. So the 60th should be somewhere on the right side. Uh, so we highlighted this in blue. This is the area that we're trying to find. We're trying to find what X here. What is the num the value, the, the, the grade or the weight here in this example? All right. Use the normal curve cumulative population table to find the z-score given in the uh, probability. Area to, to the left of the z-score is 6%. This is what so far. So what I want you to do now, here's the new thing. So we know that this is a 60%. That's the z-score it's given to us. Go to the table, the z-score table, and find a, a, a value close to 0 0.06. What is the value to be 0 0.06? Go there, go to the table and find it. Go to the table, please. And look into the body, not on the columns, not on the rows, not on the headings, just inside the table. And find out what would be the value that is close to 0 0.06. And what would be the value if you could look closer into the body of the table, you will find a value of 0.5987. That's close enough. That's close enough. And now look into the score. What is that score? The z-score for it would be 0.25. You go to the you go to the row, you will find the 0.2, and you go to the column, you will find out that's 0 0.05. So you put them together, the z-score would be 0.25. The z-score for the 60th percentile is 20.25 and now let's use the equation if you remember the equation z is equal to x minus the x bar divided by the sigma so now we have the z 0.25 what we need to do we need to find x x is is missing here we know the average is 70 we know the standard deviation is 13. And you solve the equation for one variable, which is x, and that will give you the score to be 73.25. What does that mean? That means if your weight 73.25, you will be on the 60th percentile. 60th percentile. All right, let's take another example here. Find the 10th percentile of the standard normal curve. They are asking for uh, a Z value to the left. So 10 percentile, where's the 10 percent? We know this is, we're going to the normal, which is a mean zero and the standard deviation one here. And we're trying to find the 10 percentile. We know this is a 50%. Again, this is 50 or 0.05. And we're trying to find 0 0.01 and we estimated to be this area that right there so what we need to do search in the body of the table inside the table to the closest value to be point, point 0.1 and the closest one if you find it go back into the table and find that value you will see the value in the body of the table to be 0 0.1003 and now look into the z-score to the columns and to the rows Go to the left and see what value is that, and go to the to the heading of, of the column and see what value is that. Combine them together, that will give you a z-score of negative one, two, eight. And now we apply the equation of z equal x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And we solve the equation for x, z value is one, negative one, two, eight minus x this is the we need to find the, the mean is 70 the sigma 13 and solve the equation for x again here's an example you go inside the body of the table find a value closer to 0 0.01 and we found this is the value closer to 0 0.01 which is you go to the left this is the the heading of that row, one negative 1.2. And for the columns, the heading for the column is 0 0.08. You say, okay, this is the value. This is close enough. So the Z score is 1.28.
and now you apply the equation as we did here and you find x to be 116.1 oh no no uh nope that's a different uh that's another question anyway you find the the the, the z value for that uh let, let's find it together so if we say uh can somebody help me with this guys okay find the equation uh this is the equation one minus 1.28 equal x minus 70 divided by 13 in order to find x you have to multiply negative 1.28 times 13 add to that the 70 and that would be what 53.36. 53, thank you, Alicia. I would be lost without you, Alicia. <laughs> thank you so much. 53 point? 36. 36, thank you. So the X is 53.36 is uh, which basically the 10th percentile. So this value right here is 53. Oh, that's, uh, that's totally different. I did mix up with a Z of that, that example, but uh, it would work. If that's the example where it's 70 here, the mean, and we're trying to find the 10th percentile, that would be 53.36, which means if your weight is 53.36, you will be within the first 10% of the, of the weights of the student. All right, so are there more examples here, questions? I want you to take a look into that. I don't wanna take more, uh, more time of this, uh, but feel free to review it on your own. There is another link that's very helpful as well. Uh, if you could wait for me for a, uh, just a quick minute, I could just show you how to use this. Similar to the website that I shared with you. But that's for finding if, if the percentile is given. So if the percentile is given. So we're having the area of. Uh, what area? Let's take an example here. 60th percentile. So we're going to 60th. All right. Hold on. Let's do the mean is 70. The standard deviation is. Thirteen. And. Specific. All right, so I, I want you guys to explore this. I might get back to you on this. I'm not sure uh, why there's giving me errors here. So I will have to uh, maybe refresh that. So the mean would be 70 and we have 13. And we have the area to be point zero six point six. Okay, that's above sixty percentile. Okay, above, below, between outside okay another website that you could use it helpful uh i will get back to you there could be some errors here uh you don't have to stay with me for longer i'd like to thank you a reminder that next week would be the midterm uh i will give you more updates on how many questions what type of questions during the weekend uh so just be prepared i 
don't think we will have any Zoom meetings for uh, for next week. Uh, however, I will be available for you to uh, answer your questions and go over some concepts. Uh, again, we're done with uh, uh, most of the concept. Work with your groups on the assignment, assignment one and two as well. These are group-based assignments. So make sure to work with your groups on, uh, on these assignments. I'm gonna stay here for another five or 10 minutes. If you have any question, feel free to ask. If not, I'll uh, be in touch with you regarding the midterm. Have a good weekend. You too, thank you.